Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right and a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. What's good, Alaska? This is Scott Levesque, and you're listening to the midweek edition of the Must Read Alaska podcast. I want to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining with me and our special guest today. But before we get into that, as as always, you know, just a simple request. It takes just a minute or two. If you can give us a five-star review, that would be incredible. It helps us with our searching components when people are looking for our podcast or topics that we touch on here. It is incredibly useful. And if you just want to take that extra mile and go ahead and give us a written review, that'd be incredible as well. We always love hearing from our listeners, our supporters, and our readers. And you guys have been gracious and very generous with your support. So again, thank you. If you could just take a few minutes to at least give us a five-star review. And if you want to go ahead and give us a written review, that would be very, very helpful. Well, today I'm really excited to uh, welcome a guest here that I'm, 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 he is in the thick of it right now. And that's Dave Bronson. He is with me today joining us. Dave, how are you doing? I am doing well, my friend. How are you? I am doing excellent. Listen, you are a busy man, so I just want to stop and say thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I know our audience is eager to hear from you, but uh, I know you're busy. You are hot on the campaign trail for this runoff election, and we are in the heat of it. People are voting. There's a lot of stuff going on. And one of the things I want to touch on before we even get into some of these topics are some of the, the questions not only our listeners are having, but maybe some of the voters uh, in the primary that do not know what's going on right now. And one of the things is we do actually have a runoff election, don't we? Yes, we do on May 11th. And in my in my contention to people is do not throw away a ballot you get in the mail. That's actually the runoff ballot, is it not? Yeah, we're getting a bit of that now in our feedback as we go door to door and phone calling. People have actually thrown their ballots away for the runoff election. And the, some will say, well, Dave Bronson already won. He's... <coughs> He's uh, two points ahead of Forrest Dunbar. What's going on here? And we're saying, no, that's, that's step one. That was essentially the general election. Now we have the, uh, we've, we've got the runoff and uh, it's on May 11th. We're preparing for it. We're fighting, uh, fighting for it with everything we have. And we just ask people uh, to, uh, to pay attention, look at their ballots and uh, fill them out and then drop them in the drop box. And if you're absolutely it, certainly uh, put it in the mail. Absolutely. Listen, uh, my listeners know I am a comp- vote, 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 vote. You want change, you need to vote. So remember, we're in a runoff election right now, so you're going to get another ballot. The other thing that's interesting, Dave, I've heard this, and again, it's anecdotal. It's not the entire municipality, but a lot of people don't realize that Forrest Dunbar is actually on the assembly currently, do they? Yeah, they don't understand it. Uh, he talks, he, he's campaigning as a man of the center right, which I really am. He is not. He is a radical AOC uh, type leftist. And uh, the path he has put us on in the last six years that he that uh, five years that he has been in office, uh, he's caused the problem. So, you know, normally when you tell your kid and he's using your your snowmobile or something, you say you break it, uh, you fix it. Well, it doesn't work that way in government. You break it, you go away. And uh, I don't think we should give him the opportunity to fix that which he breaks because I've seen his plan on how to fix things. Uh, and that's not how you fix things. He's all he does is look for more money to spend when in the, at the end of the day, uh, we need to do things completely differently. That's right. And, and I think it's important for people to realize voters, listen, you need to inform your neighbors and in your community forced is still on the assembly. And a lot of the enacted policies that have happened through this COVID experience and even beforehand, when it comes to public safety, that was Forrest. I mean, you can look eight times he's voted to extend the declaration of emergency, and that's paired with the emergency powers. So you can't inextricably strip those two apart. That Those go hand in hand. And he has done it eight times, which has been detrimental to our community, our businesses, and, and a lot of our uh, families here. And, and a lot of people don't know that. They think he is uh, just uh, totally yeah. isolated from that. Yes, he has voted. Uh, there's 20 emergency orders which restrict our freedom, shut down our business, or uh, <coughs> compel us to wear masks. Um, he, he's voted for every single emergency order. There's 20 of them. 
And, That's right. Um, so we, we don't want to forget that. He's the guy that broke us, and now he wants to come in as the uh, knight in shining armor to save us from his own debacle. Um, we're not going to stand for that. A juxtaposition, to be honest with you. Well, uh, I just wanted to make sure the people out there know that there is actually a runoff election going on and the ballot in their mailbox needs to be opened and it needs to be circled to see the change that you want to see here in the municipality. But Dave, let me talk a little bit about your team because you you've got a team, a workhorse of a team over there. Uh, when it comes to door-to-door -door, uh, meet and greets, when it comes to actually doing fundraisers or just meet and greets in general, you really do have a powerhouse team, don't you? Yeah, I, I believe, and I've been complimented by some of my former opponents uh, uh, that we do have the best team. I swear by them. Uh, uh, we, from our volunteer coordinators to our paid uh, staff, uh, we've simply got the best. Uh, and, uh, you know, I tell people, and I say this routinely, and it's no false modesty, it's this, is you can be the best candidate in the world, but if you don't have a great team, you're just not going to win. And uh, so... Uh, I've been lucky to be blessed by the, the best team in, in politics in Alaska right now. I'm, I'm proud of them and they're, uh, they're turning out the boat. Absolutely. And uh, I've, again, this is anecdotal, but I, I've got a lot of friends in, in various parts of Anchorage who have been really pleased uh, with their opportunity to talk to people on your team as they go door to door knocking and advocating for you. So that's been, that's been really positive. And, and again, that's a kudo to you and your team. But in uh, part of that is, is some of these events that you've had uh, that have been very well received. Um, they've also been uh, extremely well attended. And one of those areas was uh, this past Sunday at the McKenna Brothers shop. Um, you had a special guest there and he gave you quite an honor by an endorsement. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was uh, Senator Dan Sullivan. Uh, he stood up. He, he introduced me. He's a great guy. Um, him and, him and Rick Meistrom were there. Um, Dan Sullivan endorsed me. Uh, I believe there's another event coming up here in Eagle River next week where he will be there as well as other uh, leaders in our community. And we're just going to have some fun at that event. Uh, but yeah, uh, Senator Sullivan endorsed me. We are of like mind. And uh, uh, I won't hold the fact that he's a Marine against him. I'm Air <laughs> Force. But no, he's a great guy, great leader, and uh, I'm sure proud of what he's doing uh, in the United States Senate. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is incredible. It's awesome to have a U.S. Senator, uh, you know, endorse yeah. uh, a candidate for mayor here in, in Anchorage. That's I, I consider that a big deal, um, particularly when it comes to, you know, his leadership, obviously, at the federal level. Well, oh, remember, too, he's 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 he lives in Anchorage. He has a home here. He's been here mm -hmm. nearly 20 years and uh, he's he's invested in this city as well because it is his home. And, uh, um, and I appreciate that because I've, I've been in this city for 30 years and mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is my home. I tell people I, I want to <laughs> grow old and get fat and die in the city. And, uh, um, and I'm, and I'm working on all three of those, frankly. So sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think again, that's, that's great. And so you have another event uh, happening. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? You said it's an Eagle river. Yeah, there's an event uh, back off. I'll have to check the calendar. I think it's on the, uh, I think it's on the sixth. The calendar is literally quite full. Uh, we're turning down event events. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, Eagle River Alliance Club, 5 p.m. Uh, in Eagle River on the sixth. Right. So Dan Sullivan, we're there. We've got an invite into, but I, I think the governor's going to be there. Um, Don Young can't make it because he'll be in Fairbanks. I had lunch with him yesterday, but he wanted to be there. Uh, so yeah, it's just kind of a, a rally, get out the vote. This is what we got to remember is that in the election a few weeks ago, um, Eagle River kind of underperformed yeah. and, uh, you know, no slight on them, but, uh, we've got to understand something in this city, the way the demographic goes, um, a conservative center-right guy like me cannot win without, uh, places like all the, the arc from Ocean View, South Hillside. And right. then Eagle River, Chugiak, um, and everyone overperformed there except Eagle River, which underperformed, I think, by seven points. And that's a big one. So that's why we're focusing on Eagle River, because uh, we need to up our game out there and get those people to turn out and vote. Absolutely. I think, like you said, you know, demographics play a large part in where people live and, you know, where they tend to vote. 
and where they fall on that political spectrum. Obviously, Eagle River is more of a conservative area. So the more right. turnout you can get in that area, obviously, like you said, the, the better chances in, in this runoff election, which, again, I'm going to harp on this. You know, the readers, listeners and supporters of Must Read Alaska, they want to see change. And so the only way you do that is by the vote. Uh, particularly in this circumstance. So I'm really excited. Listen, th there's a couple things I actually want to talk to you about. I, I love okay. I, lo I love diving into policy here. And one of the big ones, I know your platform from day one, Dave, you and I uh, met in the summer of uh, 2020 in terms of just talking about politics. We've met a little earlier than that. But um, we talked about what was going on during this COVID lockdown. And the, the decisions made by the assembly, particularly the assembly that is currently in place, which includes Forrest Dunbar. And this assembly is again, voted eight times to extend the emergency declaration, which by extension extends the emergency powers for the mayor, which has been used to lock Anchorage down. Now, Forrest is saying he is the candidate to unlock the economy when for the last year plus, he's been the one to lock down the economy. Why do you think he's doing that? <laughs> politics, campaign yeah. politics. Yeah. I, um, it, it, <clears throat> me. it was real clear to us what he what he did, uh, why he did it. More importantly, um, he, he's the the polling is not in his favor. Uh, right. He's, he's got to do a he's got to do a hail mary and 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 that's it. Because when you ask him, when he always talks about he's the guy, the data guy, the the real science guy, he is not. There's nothing in those, these decisions he's made in the last eight or nine months that in any way uh, reflect the science of the matter. He blindly right. follows the CDC, um, and certainly the CDC we need to listen to, but I worked for the government for 24 years, and uh, if you uh, blindly believe what the government tells you, especially on things of, uh, like in the military, on things of health, stuff like that, if you do that without questioning, uh, now, certainly you have to follow orders, but if you do that without question, you're putting yourself in a bad spot. And right. the CDC is not the only voice that's out there. Certainly Stanford Medical is out there, and we should have been listening to them as well uh, all this time. And, uh, and all of a sudden here, uh, he still said we were on a Zoom or a, a Zoom call today, a, a, a kind of a debate thing. And he says, we've got to get through this pandemic. My question is, where's the pandemic? Right. Uh, uh, where's the epidemic? It doesn't exist. Uh, right. And um, and of course, the question is, is, since last summer, did it ever exist? So, well, uh, in, yeah, in, well, in, I was going to say, Dave, he's, he's painted you sort of as a uh, he's painted you with any it's the playbook. He's painted you yeah. with the left leaning playbook for for conservatives, which is you're an anti-vaxxer. You're a covid uh -huh. denier. You're uh, um, uh, you're, you know, whatever it is yeah, I, I mean I, and let's let's be clear i'm i'm neither of them uh november 12th i was, I was diagnosed by capstone is being covid positive my wife my son and i were all we live in the same home uh i was diagnosed with it it was a mild case but then in january the symptoms came back uh some of the sins symptom symptoms primarily sinus infections a persistent cough which in and uh and uh, chronic fatigue came back in, in force and it really impacted my ability to campaign. I, in fact, I went a long time without even telling my, my crew because my team, because I didn't want to worry them. And I'm still paying right now money out of pocket for medical treatment be, because of these secondary long-term symptoms. And uh, certainly now I'm getting much better and uh, we're on our ro road to uh, complete recovery. But for me to sit there and deny something that I have is ridiculous. And but they're just throwing out these charges. Right. They always do. And um, they won't stick. I think the people understand uh, mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah, I would I would agree with you. And the last one I couldn't think of is the right wing conspiracy theorist uh, line that is being used a lot now to again, these are all just things that are just being thrown out. Like anytime you disagree, uh, you're a racist or you're a xenophobe. Or, yeah. I mean, it's just. It's unfortunate because these words don't mean anything anymore. They're just hawked around when, you know, we need to fight real racism and xenophobia and whatnot. But uh, let's get back on let's get back on his, you know, his idea of this economy. You know, one of the first things I, I noticed is when you go to this website, I know you're not there. I'm there. I've studied this. And the first thing he says to reinvigor the economy is 70 percent of eligible Anchorage adults need to be vaccinated. Does that sound like an economic plan? Uh, it's mathematically 
impossible plan because we looked at the numbers when when uh, Mr. He and Mr. Thompson came out with that seventy percent uh, uh, subscription that they were or that idea that they were going to subscribe to. Uh, we went and did the numbers, the demographics in Anchorage, and it's impossible to get there. The reason right. being is that you have the under 16, which make up a certain percent of the population. Then you have the other um, uh, part of the population that won't get the vaccine. If you take the remaining portion, you could vaccinate 100% of them and you cannot get to 70% of the total. It's not possible. I can't believe they don't know that. It's quite simple math. And, right. uh, but they don't, they don't understand that. And uh, shame on them because quite frankly, they're, uh, they've shut down this economy. They've destroyed lives and businesses. They've cost people their their homes, and uh, that that is a tragedy that they are going to have to answer for because they broke that, uh, or they right. broke this. they did this. And we're we're just gonna you know after the fact, certainly maybe too late, but um, uh, we're gonna point out where they made their mistakes. Uh, certainly, we need to deal with COVID early on. The notion of flattening the curve so as to not uh, overwhelm our healthcare facilities. That, that was a, a good idea, but the notion that the government can come in and unilaterally shut down a person's business, private property, that is clearly unconstitution, unconstitutional, right. it's, it's illegal. And, uh, but they just did that. And then for no science whatsoever, they're picking six foot you know, spacing between restaurant tables when the World Health Organization says one meter, which is about half that distance. Again, the, the science is quite frank. I think we should have been studying um, Stanford, following Stanford Medical all the time, because if we go back 13 months, uh, Dr. Jay Bhattacharya at uh, Stanford Medical and his team, they've called this. They've called it right. accurately, and a year later, they've been proven true. Well, and, and I agree with you. Uh, I think we're, we're picking and choosing what science quote we want to believe. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, again, people not knowing he's been on the assembly. I mean, Forrest has been an advocate for the public who has come and testified to call them uh, anti-science people, science deniers, all that. When the reality is, is it's not anti-science. It's just not his science. Right. And that's been the frustration for the public. It's like, wait a minute, bro. We're bringing in stuff that, that disproves what you're saying from reputable, scholarly-based research and yet you're telling us that's anti-science and i think for the public it's the reason why they're sick of hearing from the public because uh, just let's remember too just a couple of weeks ago it missed for some reason i guess the mainstream media the national institute of health published i think a 26 page um abstract on uh whether masks work or not and the conclusions were clear the masks don't work they don't protect the wearer and they don't protect other people and in fact, they, it goes on if you go into the further, the, the, the conclusions in the beginning, so you can kind of get there. But if you go back and look in the construct, uh, the, the masks are actually problematic because is what they do. If you have the virus and you're touching your mask and you're, you're touching a credit card slot or something else, uh, it's, it, it's actually assisting in the spread of, of right. So, uh, but that somehow the mainstream media uh, miss that. They don't want to report on that. I don't know why, because the consequences of following a policy um, that that subscribes to this notion is is very harmful to people. We should have been open completely a long time ago. And of course, there's no answer to the reason why Texas and Florida are seeing reduced number of cases. And uh, was still And yeah. was still Yeah. And yet, and yet those that are locked down are still seeing a higher number of frequency in cases nobody can explain that but yet there it is um you know and, and again i know we could dive into a lot of uh forces ideas his i mean he's got a 10 point system that he thinks I, I just have a hard time understanding a lot of what's going on through his mind when it comes to the economy it feels like he's not actually familiar with it i mean as far as jump starting the economy he's he's even put like hey we're going to recruit 10 companies to establish a remote work satellite office in anchorage the point of remote work is that you don't need an office. So <laughs> yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, I'm absolutely This confused. is the thing, 10 companies or a 10 point plan. We don't need 10 more of anything is what we need of, I really believe is, is 10 fewer politicians in leading government in Anchorage. That's nine on the assembly and, uh, and, and one in the mayor's office. That's the 10 point change that we need. And uh, <laughs> again, we're working real hard at making that happen. Right. Well said. Well said. And and I think the people are behind that change, to be honest with you. Well, right. I want to before we go, I do want to get your thoughts on this and, and maybe um, 
you know, I know it's politics, but let's dive a little deeper. On Tuesday, there was a sudden change of heart on the assembly where now they want to back off a lot of the emergency orders, make numerous amendments to them to, quote, open up business because that's what Forrest wants to do. And now remember, everybody, Forrest is still on the assembly. You can still see his voting record. And this was part of it. And and I'm just going to really kind of quick line this. This is a political job. This was a political move. Christopher Constant initiates the uh, the motion. And guess who's second to, to initiate it? So it's on the record, Forrest Dunbar. So why wasn't this done months ago, weeks ago? Why wasn't this done the other eight times when people were begging, when people were saying, my business is going down, when people were saying, you guys don't understand, you're killing this economy, you're killing this community. And again, big box stores are not feeling the effect of this. They can, no. You can go in to Costco and stand closer than six feet and just be fine. But it's your mom and pop shops. It's your, you know, your, your Kreiner's Diner, I, you, whatever. These, these organizations died. Some of them will never come back. And yet now the audacity to make this move to look like uh, this is a man of the people, a man of the economy, a man of the municipality. Um, I, I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on this, because for me, this was a slap in the face to this right, municipality. Well, remember something here, Scott, is this, uh, on the assembly, on the left spectrum of the assembly, the nine members, uh, there's a chain of command. That chain of command starts with Forrest Dunbar and Christopher Constant. They run that show. Everyone else pretty much follows and falls in line. Now, Now, uh, Mr. Weddleton uh, seems to be kind of breaking from that, but there is a chain of command. And so this notion that the city is broken or has been broken, that's on Forrest Dunbar. He's the guy that's led that, him and Mr. Constant. And uh, let's not forget that. The man who broke it, now he wants to fix it. And even the plan that he has to fix it is nonsensical, like you say. Uh, uh, but he does say, I hear him quite often on, on his, I can almost give his stump speech, the man wants to create something called a Department of Outdoor Recreation. <laughs> yep. Um, and he says it, it's to entice people, to organize people and entice people to use our parks, our bike trails and our hiking, uh, you know, our, our hiking trails and bike trails. Um, uh, you know, I didn't think the founders ever thought of this notion that the government should be getting into the uh, business of um, citizens getting exercise. And right. uh, so he's a big government guy. You, you talk about his fixes. He's always looking for more money here, more money there, but not once does he ever talk about cutting the size of government. But yet, yet he, he, he attacks me. He thinks if I want to cut government, the first thing I'm going to do is, is cut police and fire. Right. Well, that's not going to happen. Right. And, uh, but he, he says that and we let him go. He's, 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 he's a smart young guy. I got to admit, you know, he, he articulates well and, and, and he's, a, he's a very smart young guy, but he uses that great intellect He's going to, and he has been, to lead our, our city in the in the wrong direction. Um, well, I've, I've seen a lot have of the life experience to run a city of two hundred ninety one thousand people. I mean, he just doesn't have the experience. Right. And uh, um, boy, he's <laughs> we couldn't pick a worse person to lead this city than Forrest Dunbar. Well, and, and again, it's it's I, I've seen the advertisement. You know, Dave Bronson wants to incarcerate essentially all the homeless. I mean, just <laughs> I this nonsense. I, it, it's sort of frustrating. And I, I've got to tell you, Dave, I've, I've heard a lot of people just like, what is, do they think this works? You know, it's kind of like the Al Gross thing. Like, sure, you yeah. want to be catchy. That's great. But the reality is it's just not true. So you can you can throw a catchy tune out there, but nobody believes it. Now, remember, you know, it, Al, Al Gross spent a lot of money, uh, just like Forrest Dunbar. He's going to make more than us. He's, he's going to raise more. He's going to spend more than us, just like Al Gross. But remember, Dan Sullivan took Anchorage. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and we have to we have to remember that the notion that this is a somehow a blue city. It is not. I think it is. It's slightly red, uh, possibly purple in the middle. But it's it's this. This is still a pretty conservative uh, city. I think the trouble is in the last several years, we've we've uh, uh, life has been good in this city up until just a few years ago that we stopped paying attention back in. 2013, 2014, 2015, and we allowed these radical leftists like Mr. Berkowitz and Mr. Dunbar to get elected to office. We were asleep at the switch, and, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. And guess what? COVID came in, highlighted all of our weaknesses, and boy, it didn't go well. No, it definitely did not. And, and unfortunately, Dave, um, you know, we're seeing the the after effects of poorly run, poor leadership, poor policy. 
And uh, listen, I know people don't like to hear it, but this is if, if force gets in, you know, his ideology is that of Portland. It's that of Seattle. It's that of San Francisco. And I cannot tell you the droves of people moving to Texas and Florida to get away from those states and high Wasilla, taxes. Wasilla and the Kenai Peninsula, there is not a day that doesn't go by that someone and it's now it's dozens of people have told me they says if Forrest Dunbar wins, they are leaving the city and they're, they are it, Texas is a main location, but um, the Wasilla and and the uh, peninsula people get away because you have to protect the value of your home and your property. And right. quite frankly, you got to pre protect yourself on the streets. And if we can continue to go down this path, we are in really big trouble. And just like you said, Scott, this path. This path leads from Anchorage to, to Portland, to Seattle, to San Francisco, and it doesn't end in these little comfortable semi-socialist countries like uh, Western Europe is what it ends up. It ends up in, uh, in Venezuela, where the currency blows up by the heaps like our leaves do in the fall. Um, that's not a place I want to be. But then, then again, I trust the voters uh, in uh, in Anchorage, they're they're going to make the choice what's best for them. And if they choose Forrest Dunbar, I'll, I'll support that. That that's I won't like it, but I'll support that. And we'll carry on and, and and we'll we'll continue fighting on. Well, I can say, Dave, there is a lot of uh, momentum is a key thing, whether in an organization or in a campaign. And it certainly looks like you have that in uh, in droves right now. The last thing I want to touch on, Dave, and I think it's an important factor for our listeners is is the. Um, letter you put out in regards to your support for public safety and specifically to first responders in the APD. I think that was uh, a momentous thing. And obviously, um, the the uh, uh, the union, the the police, uh, the police union did not endorse Forrest Dunbar. And, and if you don't know, there was many officers that came and testified in front of them uh, requesting begging saying do not do this they weren't even saying endorse you they were just saying hey listen we don't want our values to be aligned with that man which i thought spoke volumes um right. can you just can you just share a little bit about what that meant and, and what you think and obviously i know you're a a strong uh strong supporter of the police but just kind of give us a little bit of that before we head on out well um i've got a lot of friends on the police department they were keeping me informed of the of this uh, hour by hour, hour here Sunday, there was a meeting here a couple of weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, where the rank and file revolted. And Jeremy Conkling, the APD, uh, APDA um, president, uh, he wanted to endorse his, his friend, Forrest Dunbar. And uh, I guess they took a 40 minute walk in a park somewhere and came to a conclusion on what they could agree on. And they moved forward. Well, the rank and file didn't like that. And there was a revolt. I counseled my friends. I says, you know, I've been in union for 30 years. Just, I just retired. And I, I know what union politics is like. And I told them, don't, don't do a scorched earth. Don't ruin your position within your union uh, uh, just because of me. Because at the end of the day, would I have liked the APD endorsement? Yes, but I knew I was never going to get it because of, you know, there's folks on the e-board that simply don't like me. And Jeremy Conkling uh, being one of them. And, uh, but I want the rank and file support because they, they have my support. Forrest right. Dunbar is a defund the police politician. I, I, I am a thin blue line supporter of the police. We are the exact opposite. There is almost nothing that Forrest Dunbar and I are not the opposite on, other than maybe plowing streets and repairing potholes. Those things I'll, I'll agree with them on. We'll, we'll pass ordinances, we'll pay bills, uh, we'll, we'll pave the streets and fix the potholes and plow our snow. But on these other things, these more uh, social issues like defund the police, um, it's, um, yeah, we're different. I, I'm, I think Antifa is a domestic terrorist organization and should be handled as such. Uh, his family marches with Antifa in Portland and burns down, helps to burn down cities. So you, 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 and he praises them for that. And he encourages them for that. That is wrong. That's not good for our country. Certainly not going to, uh, not going to be good for, for Anchorage. Well, I would have to agree with you because I think it speaks volume that those, uh, those are actually uh, on the streets. Those who, who did stand up against what the, the union was trying to do. It speaks volume. They know where force stands on a lot of these issues and, and they know that it would not be good for them for him to be in the position 
uh, that he's currently running for. And so I think that speaks volumes. I thought it was a very powerful statement by those uh, uh, folks within the union that were not in the leadership side, but those who were raising their voice in opposition to that. And it spoke volumes for you, for sure. Um, uh, Listen, uh, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and uh, we've been at this for half an hour. I could talk to you all day about stuff, but I know you're busy. Yes, I uh, am. (laughs) And I need to make sure this gets up because the listeners want to hear from you, Dave. And, and I just want to let you know, I, I have I have extended an offer to Forrest Dunbar and his campaign. And I've actually said this. I just want to put it on the record. And I got the email. I said I would be more than willing to meet him where he was. I said I'd be more than willing to record it. I would edit it in front of him so he didn't think I was trying to selectively edit anything. I mean, I do everything I can to ask the tough questions because I think our listeners, readers, and supporters want to know, hey, Forrest, what do you really believe? And I want to get to that nitty gritty. So we extended that offer again on social media, but I don't think we're going to get it. But Dave, I do appreciate your time because I do think people love the fact that you're accessible, you're reliable, and you have that integrity. And I think that's really important for our our city and our our municipality as we move forward. And I appreciate your time. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing a positive result for you, my friends. I really do. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Good to see you. No problem. You take care. Well, that's it, yes, uh, guys. We've uh, we've been talking for about a half an hour now, and uh, I don't want to extend this too, too long. But uh, listen, I'm really excited about this. I want to make sure that everybody knows there is a runoff happening currently. So if you get a ballot in your mailbox, do not throw it away. Open it up. Vote for the change you want to see and make sure you mail it in. It is vital. May 11th is the last day. That is that is what this is all about. And remember, we've been talking for weeks now about just the change that we want to see in this in this municipality. We want to see the businesses opened up. We want to see people making a living again. We want to see, um, we just want to see a change, a new direction, a, a new opportunity. And I think, you know, it's us that can make that happen. It's it's the reader, it's the listener, it's the supporter, it's it's the population, it's our municipality. So do not throw away ballots. This election is not over. It, we are in a runoff and you need to vote. Well, again, that's it for me. Listen, you can find us on all the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, MeWe, uh, Rumble, um, Parlor, and of course, YouTube. You can find us all on those with the handle must read Alaska, all one word. And on YouTube, you can find all our content uh, video wise at youtube.com slash must read alaska and of course as always you can find all of our editorial contents and video content on our website at mustreadalaska.com listen we love our supporters our readers and our listeners if you want to continue to help us to make this operation continue it's three people guys it's three people and a lot of great contributors that write articles for us but it's three of us that are trying to do this on a daily basis and our fearless leader suzanne has done a great job but if you want to support us Go to mustreadalaska.com and up in the right-hand corner, you can donate there. Well, again, that's it for me this week. Get out there, vote. Make sure you do not throw away your ballot when you get it in the mail, but vote, 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 vote. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week.